Did you know that if you are over the age of 18, you should have some level of estate planning established? The best estate plan depends on your individual needs. Today, I'm gonna to share with you four documents which will create a proper estate plan for you. If you use these documents and review your plan frequently by adjusting as needed, you'll be on your way to living a financially fit life. These changes will benefit you and your family in the future. Welcome back to Financially Fit with Katie. I am Katie McDonald and I am dedicated to being your anchor for a financially fit life. Please do not forget to subscribe. That way you will be notified when new content will be uploaded. Now let's jump into today's topic on estate planning. So over the past few months, especially with COVID-19, we have been forced to face fears of falling ill losing a job, spending time alone, and that list goes on. With these anxieties weighing on your mind, it may feel as though there is a sudden need to get your affairs in order just in case something happens. It never hurts to be prepared. For instance, you may be hospitalized for coronavirus or another illness. Individuals over the age of 18 should have some level of estate planning in place. You may be surprised to learn that it's not only wills and trusts that you need to prioritize. A strong estate plan includes several important documents such as living trusts, financial powers of attorney, healthcare proxies, and more. So if you do not currently have these documents, I highly recommend that you reach out to a local estate planning attorney who can meet with you and then come up with a plan that is going to fit for your specific needs. So here are a couple of those documents that I discussed. So power of attorney and a healthcare proxy. A financial power of attorney grants authority to carry on a person's financial affairs and protect their property by acting on their behalf. Now a healthcare proxy grants the authority to make healthcare decisions on your behalf. Should you become incompetent or incapacitated. So ensuring that you name a trustworthy and reliable individual as your powers of attorney is key as you update your estate plan. Now one thing to note is again if you have a child who is 18 and they're going off to college very important to make sure that there is a health care proxy in case something God forbid happens you want to know that you're able to step in and to ask some of these questions um, if something were if they were to go into a hospital and there was um, a medical issue number two your will a last will and testament a legal document that allows you to direct distribution of your property at the time of your death a will also allows you to appoint an executor who oversees the distribution of your assets this person will attend to your affairs after you pass probate your will if necessary, and file income and estate tax returns on your behalf. Everyone has assets that must transfer after a person's death. And without a will, there is no direction as to how and whom the assets will pass. So this would be handled by the state and the court will decide on the person to oversee the administration if you have not named one. Now the third is a living trust. Your trust benefits you while you are alive and may also be beneficial to others, such as your spouse or children. Now, appointing a trustee will identify who will step in to manage your affairs after you pass without the involvement of the court, which avoids extra time and money associated with probate. A trust also affords you privacy regarding the details of your estate since it eliminates the need to probate, which that is a public process. Now, number four, beneficiaries. You want to make sure that you are updating your beneficiaries periodically. This needs to be done, I would say, either after every life you know, change or make a note to look at them You know, every year, every couple of years. You want to check your life insurance policies, you want to look at your retirement accounts because whoever is listed as the beneficiary, that's where those assets are going to go. So if you have an old 401k 
from you know a job when you just got out of college or maybe you purchased an insurance policy before you were married and now you're married but it had your parents listed as the beneficiary or maybe you had a policy when you were married and then you got divorced and you're remarried but you never changed that beneficiary to the new spouse and God forbid something happens to you that money's going to go to the ex-spouse and there's not much that the current spouse would be able to do. That beneficiary form is a legal document and it needs to state exactly who you want those assets to go to. So while you have the time, you should start reviewing your estate plan and adjust as needed. Making necessary and important changes now will benefit you and your family in the future. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you know, either all the documents are certain things that you'll need or, you know, you picked up something that's going to help with your circumstance. If there's anything I can do to help you with your financial future, my contact information is listed in the description box. And until next time, everyone, take care, be well.